Ignorance of the law has never been a defense. No one is above the law, um, from the prime minister all the way down to the common man on the street. Then we have to talk about rules and we have to talk about governance. We don't have no friend up there so because them become them and them side up now with them and then now we there so now still I wonder how the light will have a ball. Every just society is based on the rule of law. Jamaicans need to know what the laws are and what are not the law. I am Professor Trevor Munro, Executive Director of National Integrity Action. The documentary you are about to see deals with new rules and laws applicable to us all Jamaicans. There are good laws and good rules that we have to know about and insist on their observance. They deal with political parties, who can and cannot contribute, how much can be given, what are the limits. They deal with the institutions set up to catch big fish, those involved in serious crime and corruption. They deal with judges. Are they accountable? If so, to whom and how? The documentary is to tell us how these new rules and laws function, because they are good for us to have to expand our rights and justice. And that is why NIA has produced this documentary, so that we become more aware and more able to speak out and to stand up in upholding what is right. Jamaica and the Jamaican people, like democratic countries worldwide, face a very serious challenge. How do we, the majority, ensure that big and wealthy people who make legitimate political contributions do not buy out election candidates, buy out political leaders, so that they get the main benefits from government and we, the people, get the crumbs. After many years of advocacy, National Integrity Action and other organizations actually won a law in Jamaica today which limits campaign finance contributions, which says who is banned from giving contributions, and also which requires political parties to be registered and regulated. This is an important law for us to understand, and by understanding it, ensuring that it is not only a law on paper, but that we the people can help to make certain that it is enforced. The registration is required to be done every year, indicate your officer core and membership, which is, I think, a very good piece of legislation. I think the actual detail in Otto is the principle that is critical, that your political parties should be institutionalized and subject to accountability, which is really what the party registration is setting up to do. Um, before the laws were passed, all a candidate had to do was, at the end of an election period, indicate how he or she spent the money, do an expenditure report. Now with reform, you have to identify the sources of the funds, the individuals who provided, how you spent it, there are caps on what each donor can provide, both at the individual level as a candidate, but also at the party level. Jamaica has a long history of democracy, right, of equal rights. The man in the street, the individual, me, you, the ordinary person, must be able to hold up his head as a Jamaican and depend on his government and on the state to be looking after the interests of Jamaica. They should structure the law in a way where the people don't get the sense of insecurity. The people should be 100% Within, with, within the law, with what the law put, put, puts out there to them, they should, be, they should take that a hundred percent. Well, I'm glad gangs can donate anything still because the government are trying to stop corruption. 
and I strongly upon that. We defend them upon that one. Yeah, campaign finance reform is very important because there have been allegations of illegal and sometimes illicit funding that gets into the political process and that is something that is certainly not desirable for any kind of democracy. There have also been concerns about the extent to which big money can influence election campaigns where you have a very small set of very large donors and then that gets reflected in policy and programs of a particular government. If everyone knew that I had contributed this $150 million, when I throw my hat in the ring for my license to be approved, it's not a secret. My application has to go through the same scrutiny, it has to go through the same kind of evaluation process as everyone else's. This is a situation again, you know, the chicken and egg situation. If we don't do it, we'll not be able to effect the transformation to begin to attract the people who want the political process. But I'm certain that once it's done, that they're up front, there are going to be a lot of objections as to how much money you spend in politics. But you really cannot have your, have your cake and eat it. If you want accountability and transparency, you have to pay. The public has to pay the bills. Over the years, Jamaica has passed many good laws and set up various bodies to curb corruption, to deal with serious crimes, to catch the respectable white-collar criminal and not just the street offender. But regrettably, these laws have not been so effective so that today, Jamaicans face the number one problem holding back progress and holding back prosperity. That problem, corruption and serious organized crime. So that after many years of advocacy by NIA and others, two new institutions and laws have been passed and set up. The Integrity Commission and the major organized crime anti-corruption agency. The purpose of these two new bodies is to ensure that no matter how prominent, no matter how powerful, no matter how respectable, those who are in breach of the laws governing corruption, those who are involved in serious organized crime, will be brought to justice so that Jamaica can one day become a place in which there is one law for all, the big as well as the small. Put it this way, they have a new, they have an opportunity now because the Integrity Commission today is very different from what existed before. They have taken the Corruption Prevention Commission, the Contractor General, and the former Integrity Commission, and they have grouped that into one body. So they know, they, in a sense, they are starting afresh. And I think having started afresh, they have this opportunity. The Integrity Commission is established to investigate, educate, prevent, and prosecute. Investigate all matters um, that is brought to its attention or it may discover that is deemed to be corrupt. They can prosecute those matters if they rise to the level of prosecution. We also have a mandate to seek to prevent acts of corruption. And we also have a mandate to educate our society about corruption. If you do something which you know is wrong, if you do something which you know you should not do, there is a penalty to pay. That's very important. And it is very important that it goes up right up the chain to the Prime Minister. I remember one Prime Minister describing himself as the chief servant of the people. Well, if you are the chief servant of the people and you serve the people in a way that is inimical to their interests and detrimental to their future, then you should pay the penalty. Jamaica is an open society. We entrust 
to certain elected leaders the responsibility of managing not only our assets, but managing our lives. It is therefore important that those leaders, those elected officials, have a watchdog to ensure that they operate within the rules. And I think once their people see examples that there are consequences to actions, one, it will deter people who may want to behave that way, but I think it will also increase public confidence and trust. I think a significant part of why um, there are so many Jamaicans who are cynical about politics and the profession is that the perception is that we are all thieves and that we thief and nothing happened to it. And I think the Integrity Commission has an opportunity to make its mark on Jamaica and to put a stamp on corruption. We believe if we can um, educate persons and encourage persons to comply along with prosecuting, then we would have a better result. The MOCA Act will um, create a fully autonomous, fully independent investigative entity. Um, we, we know that the, the JCF has and has always been the sole investigative um, entity in Jamaica. This gives us some amount of redundancy, redundancy but not only that, it, it, it creates a specialized entity that focuses on high-level corruption and major organized criminal networks. One of the things that Jamaicans have always felt is that, you know, a man might thief some ackee off a tree and then get locked up and put in jail. But the politician or the quote-unquote big man who is engaged in corruption never gets held accountable. I think it is important that Jamaicans see examples where persons have breached trust, where they have acted in a way which is corrupt or where you have nepotism or cronyism, that they be held accountable. You know, our, our, our efforts to deal with corruption, to, to you know, respond to reports and information from the public has, has assisted in, in building our credibility as an, as, as an investigative entity. Jamaica's judges have long enjoyed a reputation for independence, for not being beholden to one or another political side, as happens in so many other countries now being prone to corruption. But the judges themselves and the public recognize that even though trust and confidence in them is higher than in other parts of government, more needs to be done to build that trust and confidence. More needs to be done to make the courts more efficient, to have them serve the public regardless of station in life. Recently, Jamaica's Chief Justice actually declared his mandate to make Jamaica's courts excellent courts, ultimately the best in the Caribbean and ranking with the best in the world. When I took the oath of office one year ago, it was with a deep sense of gratitude and humility. I understood the complexity as well as the magnitude of the work that needed to be done to transform the judicial arm of government with excellence and efficiency at its core. It was also with the recognition that if Jamaica is to achieve Vision 2030, the Jamaican judiciary must remain strong and maintain its integrity. That is a mission that all of us need to support and to uphold. In order to do so, we need to know that the judges themselves while retaining their independence, have actually set guidelines for their own conduct. Guidelines to hold themselves accountable to the public. Guidelines to ensure that sentences are fair, consistent, and transparent. We need to know what those guidelines are, and we need to help to ensure that they are put into effect. But the objective is to keep judges aware of 
the responsibilities and accountability they have to the public as a whole in following principles of integrity, propriety, competence and diligence, impartiality, equality, and transparency in the work they do. To me right now, laws create is for the poorer class of people, not for the upper class of people. In reality, if it was the lower level end persons only in the corruption, I mean, that could have been dissolved a long time. Because the iron level would come in and brute force that. See, if, if the king is corrupt, then his soldiers are going to be corrupt and his followers are going to be corrupt. I'm not saying the government is corrupt, but I'm saying it is coming from the top end level. I don't think Jamaica lacks laws. I think what Jamaica lacks is an application and an enforcement of existing laws. These are the laws of Jamaica. There are many. There are hundreds of them. It's not expected that every Jamaican will know the law, but the major law that most Jamaicans need to know is our constitution. The constitution is our supreme law. It is a law of all laws. It is a document that determines what it is a government can do and a government cannot do. What is it a person can do, what a person cannot do. And it determines how it is that our country is organized. If you do the crime, you know, you have to do the time, you know. And depending on the crime that you do, that's the, 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 um, the virtue of the sentence that you're going to get, right? Well, honestly, I don't have a problem with that. Because I don't have, I don't have it in my mind to break the law. So We need to encourage people. Go downtown and go to the government printer and buy a copy of a particular act. You drive a car, go and buy a copy of the road and traffic act. You own a firearm, go and buy a copy of the Firearms Act. You are an importer, go and buy a copy of the Customs Act. These are things that can make your life better. Right, so, you know, what I find is that the more aware our population is, is the more involved we are in providing solutions to the problem. Um, our, our people, when they are aware of the laws, their rights, you know, um, what legislations out there, how can they participate in, in, in the solutions? They tend to do so. I think social media has been used, but I don't think in relation to our laws, it has been used sufficiently. And I would expect and I would hope that the Ministry of Justice would also play its part in ensuring that they do as much as they can, use their, their marketing department and their marketing tools to get persons to know what are the laws in Jamaica. We need to simplify a lot of the language of the law. We need to help the public to feel that this is not something that is only understood by people who have been to university and qualified as lawyers, but that it is something that should be understood by everyone. And the PSOJ, being the business engine of the country is concerned that all its stakeholders understand that if we allow the indisciplined behavior both in government and in the private sector to continue the marginalization of the society, the, the, the bad behavior, the violence will continue and will get worse. It is imperative that having achieved growth, we understand that the only way to go from growth to development is by imposing governance rules and obeying them. The laws of our land should serve every single citizen to improve our structure of governance, to lessen the possibility of corruption, and one day, hopefully, Jamaica will be a, a corrupt free society in which to live, do business, and grow our families. I mean, the, the mandate of the NIA is to, I think, raise public awareness about issues related to integrity and to hold the, the institutions that have the responsibility for corruption prevention and and supporting issues of integrity, to hold them to account and to highlight issues of corruption, whether they be in, in either government. And, and I do believe um, 
it, it, it's one of these, it's a thankless job. I think the NIA has helped to speak out on issues on which a lot of other persons and institutions are reluctant to speak. In particular, they have taken on the whole question of corruption and transparency, and it affects all aspects of life. What I would like to see coming out of all of this is whether it's the NIA or Human Rights Board begin to become institutions, independent institutions, funded preferably by Jamaicans, that will be able to make a meaningful independent contribution to the debates in the country. Right now we don't have enough of that and I think that's where the challenge is. What the NIA has taken on in terms of national integrity is critical because the only way that we are going to move from growth, that is straight economic activity, to growth enabling the individual citizen is if everybody is on the same playing field. I'm particularly impressed with their anti-corruption champions, you know, that they have been launching around the island that are, are really going to be a step change, I believe, in, 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 in really taking on this, this scourge. It is necessary, it is very vital and important. It has been doing some significant work in explaining equity and honesty and in fighting for the issues of the common man in the street. It is like a voice that speaks for the voice of the people who think that they have no voice. Now that you have heard from people who know and support Jamaica's new laws and rules, we in NIA hope that you have a better understanding of their importance. But remember, they are not perfect, and we shall have to improve on them as experienced teachers. But they can be real and significant in our long journey, in our long struggle, to make Jamaica a place in which no one is above the law, and in which each of us has a better chance to prosper and to make progress. But that step will be as important and as real as we decide to give it our support in the same way that more of us are now speaking out on Crime Stop, in the same way that more of us are now cooperating with our security forces. So too, we must now support the Electoral Commission of Jamaica in enforcing campaign finance law. We must support the major organized crime anti-corruption agency and our integrity commission in catching the facilitators of serious crime and of corruption. And we must support our judges in enforcing the rule of law and in ensuring that there's one law for all, the big as well as the small. <laughs>